Hey guys, welcome back to Comageddon. This week's review is the 1983 Masters of the Universe He-Man. Masters of the Universe, uh, of course, started in the early 80s, and their star was a very Conan-esque looking character named He-Man. Uh, it was followed up by an animated series in the 80s, and it was so popular it outsold every child's toy out there at the time. Uh, Master Universe has been so popular over the years, it made a uh, return in 2000. Uh, they also came out with a commemorative series, which was remolding of the original vintage uh, figures. Uh, Mattel did a, uh, a revamp of the action figure line with their Master Universe classics. But this is the man that started it all. So let's go ahead and go over uh, all these awesome details about the strongest man in the universe, He-Man. His sculpt was pretty basic, but really awesome for the day. Uh, he had this awesome painted blonde hair, this look on his face that he was just, you know, ready to protect the universe and kick some serious butt. Sculpted muscles, had the six-pack going here. The paint jobs on the figures were always really bright and crisp. And I'm lucky to still actually have my original He-Man, who is still pretty bright and crisp. Articulation, this was around, you know, the 80s, so it's you're not going to have a whole lot. It's your basic five-point articulation for the most part. You can head, uh, would go right to left, you can turn all the way around. His arms would go swivel up and down. The legs, which uh, are, on a, are on a rubber band-aid. Banded, a rubber band um, didn't have much movement. You can um, this way, but you're always going to have pretty much a squatting pose. Now, something that pretty much every Master Universe figure had an action feature. Most of them had the same action feature. He Man had a spring waist. You would turn him and wham. Now, if I can get him, there we go. You can tell mine is still very. Very springy too. I've taken very good care of this guy. Um, the figures always came with their own unique accessories. Here we have, and I'm not going to do it because it's a pain to remove, but it has a removable vest. <clears throat> so he also came with some other accessories, one of which was his battle axe, which in the animated series he didn't really ever use. That was because he-Man used this in the mini comics. That's right. This figure came with an accessory I don't currently have on me. A mini comic book. A story explaining who the character was and, you know, his battles with Skeletor. Another accessory he came with, his power sword. Now the power sword, as you can tell, is really cool. It's made of a solid plastic. However, it was unique in the fact that it wasn't complete. That's because his arch enemy Skeletor came with the other half of the power sword. These two could be combined to form a full sword. And I'll go ahead and try to get these connected. Now these never ever really fully connected for me. Um, I think it was a nifty idea. This always happened to me. But uh, it was still neat the fact that you could get a full power sword here. Now what you would do is you would take the full power sword and place it in Castle Grayskull to lower the jaw bridge. And that was a pretty unique feature to have at the time. Another cool accessory He-Man came with was his shield. Now the shield was pretty much just a solid plastic, except on the back you can tell the original was two pieces with just a bright orange piece of paper. Now the shield would fit in He-Man's left hand. 
and just clip to his wrist like you so. You could then take He-Man's power suit axe, place it in his right, and you can store his power sword in the back like so. And then he was ready to do battle. Skeletor and his evil minions beware. Some of the detailing on this guy, the paint on most of these figures were always bright and vibrant. Now there were a few things that Mattel would kind of forget about, I guess. And so sometimes a figure like He-Man would have these bracers on his wrists, but they were flesh colored and not painted. Something else Mattel would always do is reuse parts. So you might actually get the same arms on another figure, just painted different. But they always used pretty much the same buck. The He-Man figures, as cool as they are, they're pretty expensive now. Uh, Master Universe is still uh, really popular. Uh, there's a planned movie, which has been, well, let's face it, planned for about 20 years. Uh, but um, you, they're still pretty much available on sites like eBay. Um, depending on the figure, such as a complete He-Man with all his complete original accessories, uh, unopened, a total is going to cost you a minimum of around $50. Uh, in really good shape like this, um, and uh, unrepaired, it can run close, it, it can run in the hundreds. So... Um, very pricey figure, uh, I, I was lucky enough to only have to pay $30 to complete mine, which was the sword, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the sword, the vest, and the, uh, weapon, the, the shield, had the battle axe. Um, so, but this was my original He-Man, so I didn't have to spend a whole lot. Um, but there you are. He-Man from the original vintage Masters of the Universe collection. Happy hunting. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like, comment below, and share with your friends. <laughs> I hate you.